Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 21 of the Bright Horizons podcast. And guess what? For the first time ever, we have a guest speaker. Drum roll, please. Introducing Eric. Hello. So me and Eric have been friends for a very long time. Met Too this long. guy in high school. We'll talk <laughs> about that whole story later. But it's been about what? Eight years now. Oh, God. Eight years. Been, That's crazy. So yeah. introduce yourself. Tell tell the audience a bit about yourself. I have been a wanderer of everywhere. I've lived everywhere. And I kind of just ended up showing up in Surrey in grade, it was grade nine. And yeah, I've just been kind of floating through life. Nothing crazy. I've just been his right-hand man, training with him, working with him, and just being dumb with him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What's a good friend if you can't be dumb with him, you know? Yeah. That's the beauty of man, though, honestly. Yeah. That's why I love guy friendships on, like, another level. Because it's kind of, there's a, there's a brotherhood there. It's not just friends. It's an organized chaos. Yeah, that's a very good way to put it. Yeah. It is a very organized chaos, especially when we're in the gym. Like, I'll look at yeah. random <laughs> clips. Like, for example, I'll never forget that one video where I'm just standing there, and I have your hat, and I go to do the hat flip, and it just, like, crumples on my head. That was impressive. I, I still have that, and I'm never letting that go. That one was so good. One of the good. funniest moments ever. Yeah. But, yeah, it's been a long time being friends with this guy. And how did it all start? Ninth grade humanities class. Yeah. The first day we sat together, we got separated because we were, we were, t- we were too loud. We were a couple of troublemakers. The entirety of that year, the teacher specifically made layouts for the tables so we wouldn't be near each other. It got to a point, even if we are on the other sides of the class, we'd still laugh. It got to a point where she had to make sure our desks were facing completely opposite, or I just sat with the teacher for the other half of the year. My desk was right in front of Miss, um, I'm not going to say her name. Yeah, but shout uh, out to her. She knows who yeah. she is. But like, yeah. she was she was a go-to teacher. Great teacher. Love her so much. But yeah, it was a very interesting experience. And you know what? Now that I think about it, <laughs> that tiny, the funniest thing is the first time I met you, you made one joke to me. And oh, that no. is what led to an eight-year friendship. How does that even make sense? Tell me it that wasn't even crazy. funny. <laughs> it wasn't. It literally wasn't. It was just the most random thing you could have possibly said in that scenario, and I just died. Long story short, we were on the section of story writing for protagonists and antagonists, and we got to watch The Incredibles, I think, which was pretty dope. Oh, yeah. And so she's like, partner up with somebody and rattle off some examples of protagonists and antagonists, and we're rattling off like comic book characters and movie characters, and I the true theologist and genius that I am, mix up my religions and culture, and I go Hercules and Jesus with a straight face because I was so confident, and I was like, damn, that's a good one. And we were wheezing and pissing laughing on the floor to the point, yeah, I got sent out, and that was like the first week of me being at school. Yeah. I got sent out like immediately. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And then after that, it was raps. It was raps for the rest of pretty much high school, except until... Well, I'm not going to say it because I feel like the crazy thing is you can actually get demonetized for even talking about it. But, you know, the whole lockdown situation for three years. Yeah. That After too. that, mm-hmm. I never saw you again yeah. for like two and years. And then even just like changing friend groups. It was more me that changed friend groups. Mm. But we like were completely silent for like a year, year and a half. And then I think you texted me first. Or like you sent me a meme and then we got talking and then everything was back to normal. Yeah. That's crazy, though. That's the other true show of friendship is if you can completely pause something and just disappear and come back and it's Mm -hmm. the same, then... Exactly. That's what I was going to say. It's solidified. It's been solidified since day one. So that's why we've been rolling. Exactly. Like, as as boys, you kind of, like, set a foundation and then, like, no matter how long you leave the construction process, you just come back and pick up where you left off. Yeah, when you texted me, I honestly thought you died. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I did not, and we're back. And then the funniest thing is right after that, we just decided, hey, you know what? Let's start working on it. I was like, okay, sure. Yeah. But you had been working out the whole time while we weren't, like, talking that much, too. Yeah. I, I had, like, just started working. I was thinking I was maybe at, like, six months to maybe a year. Mm-hmm. And then the the day you said that you wanted to start the gym, I was so excited. I'm like, finally, I'm not alone. Yeah. I still remember <laughs> the first day that we went, and I have a picture of us, and I was still wearing my little ankle brace because I, like, messed up oh, my foot. Oh, yeah. I'll never forget that. You still wear that exact same sweater, but it fits you now. <laughs> You do, yeah. It's oh, the great one. Yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. Damn, time flies, mm-hmm. and that's only been like what a year and a half, maybe. Mm, a little that more. Was like, 
Oh, actually, no. It was probably more. That was mid-2021. So that's two and a half years. Whoa, 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 <laughs> that was mid. That was summer 2021 when we started working out. That is crazy. Yeah. Damn. Well, I mean, here we are. After all that, I think that both of those you know, interactions, both the gym and school, made us better people. Oh, 100%. And that's the main topic for today. We're going to be talking mostly about how to be a good man and just general self-improvement advice. So, Eric, do you have an opening thought that you would like to tell the audience? I feel like self-improvement is getting a really, really bad reputation because it's being viewed as extremely selfish, but it depends on what you view as self-improvement because a lot of self-improvement can be very, very selfless. Even just the simple of um, self-improvement in working harder and supplying for your family and trying to uphold the house and uphold your friend group and your family as well. And yeah, I think self-improvement can be very, very helpful to all the people around you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the ultimate goal of self-improvement is not just being the best version of yourself, but being the best version of yourself for the people around you, especially your family. That's true. I think that, that quality is very important as a man, especially because the, I'll get into it later, but I wrote down like the most important qualities, in my opinion, that make a good man. And for me, one big thing is knowing that what you do is not always just for you, right? As the man, you're kind of the provider. Mm-hmm. Like, now, again, obviously, gender stereotypes are much more different in these yeah. times. But I think that if it, if it helps everybody involved in the stereotype, I don't think it's a bad thing. Like, if you say that a man should provide for his family, Mm -hmm. sure, it might be a stereotype, but isn't it a good thing that he works hard to take care of the people he loves? I think that that we should be reinforcing those kinds of messages in today's world, but we don't, which is very interesting to me that the world has changed in such a way that we twist certain messages, or maybe not even we twist, people (laughs) twist messages. Yeah, 100%. You know, it's crazy that I have to, like, insinuate things because I can't actually outright say it. Yeah. Like, for example, I I recently found out that, like, another podcast that I listen to, every time they want to talk about the top G, they have to say that. They can't say his name because oh, yeah, it yeah, starts, yeah. like, censoring their content, which is kind of crazy that we live in a world like that. Yeah. But truth is, what can you do? The world is the way it is. But as a man... As a person, as a good person, it's your job to just navigate it the way you can, right? Mm-hmm. Like this advice obviously is generalized towards men because I can speak for men as I am a man. Yeah, <laughs> I can't speak for women. Yeah, I know. But I'd say that the majority of the advice that we give can apply to both sides. If you're trying to be successful in life in general, the success probably applies. Like saying that your environment can't dictate how you function and your success, mm-hmm. right? Like if I said that, oh, YouTube censors content that it doesn't agree with, like I was just talking about, and I use that as an excuse to not blow up or grow big on YouTube, then it doesn't matter whether I'm a man or a woman. Whatever adventure I'm doing, Mm -hmm. if I let those circumstances stop me, I'm weak. So to know that this advice applies to everyone, that's important. Just because I said man in the title does not mean that it only applies to men. Mm -hmm. We're all about gender equality here. But I think also with the heavy influence of social media and posting um, just general content for everyone, really, Mm -hmm. that's not the end of the world. Even if it is censored, it's like, oh, my God, like, we can't say anything. How long have we not had the Internet for? Even we grew up in a time where we didn't have the Internet or didn't didn't have social media. And it wasn't like that was our entire life. Even Mm -hmm. if everything shut down, everyone thinking it would be the end of the world, but it's not. True. So we've just gotten so enveloped in it and it's taken up so much of our lives that we think it's this big thing in our lives and it's not. You know, the craziest thing about that is when you think about how happy you were as a kid, you didn't have, or at least for our generation, you didn't have high-end technology around you all the time. Not at all. Now, for me, obviously, when I was growing up and going to like elementary school and stuff, I remember that before I had any consoles or anything, I remember that we did have a TV, though. We had cable. And I remember coming home every day from school and watching like Teletoon or something while I ate lunch. That was it. I didn't sit on the screen too long because what I'd only watch it while I was eating. I'm actually a day one iPad kid. Day one iPad kid. I was a little bit delayed because I came from a small town. So the tech was a lot slower. Really? I was the last generation. My computer lab still had the large box computers. None of them were flat. 
the entire computer lab had the old box computers. You know what, actually? Now that I think about it. were like 80 pounds. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no. My school had that, too. At least when I first started elementary school, the computer lab was But I do remember boxed. the changeover, though. And oh, once okay, we got okay. to the flat, I'm like, this is the future. And then I saw ThinkPad for the first time. My brain exploded. What is ThinkPad? Where it's got the little red dot oh, on it. Oh, yeah, yeah, and the little like, laptops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was blown away. I'm like, we get to use these things? Man, technology has grown so fast. But the thing is, as a kid, that wasn't what I was interested in. Like, I, I'd come home and I'd watch a show like Bakugan or, I don't know, Stormhawks, Pokemon, something like that as a kid just eating lunch and watching it. But what I enjoyed was after that, going outside and playing basketball or riding my bike with my buddies. That's what I enjoyed. And the best part about where I grew up is we lived in a cul-de-sac and three or four of the houses had like a bunch of boys living in it as well. Yeah. So all of us neighborhood kids were friends. We'd run around and do stuff. And that set a good foundation for not just my social skills, but my friendliness and life skills in general, right? That human interaction is so important. And to see that taken away from kids nowadays and adults as well, like how many people do you know that would rather sit at home and be on their phone or watch TV or do something like that rather than go out with their friends. Now, I'm not saying you have to go out and party every weekend or anything, Mm -hmm. but even if it's just going for a walk or, I don't know, going for a run, riding a bicycle. That sounds so weird, riding a bicycle, riding a bike. (laughs) Point is, you can go out and do so many things, but we've taken that away in exchange for this. But why? Like, you and I both know that the more we use this, the less happy we are. 100%. We get completely desensitized. And I've seen it in um, the up-and-coming generation, Generation Alpha. That's the reason why Toys R Us pretty much got shut down. That was such a long-standing and strong company for forever because every kid had toys, at least especially in the Western world. Oh, yeah. And I know growing up, I had tons of different toys. Oh, yeah. And I was a Lego maniac. But nowadays, kids have completely grown up without it. The best part about growing up was Beyblades. And Pokemon cards. I'll never forget those. Because I remember that no matter what happened, like even if my brother and I got into a fight, within an hour or two, we could be like playing Beyblades and it would be fine. That's another thing that I think solidified our friendship is subconsciously, you've never even told me, but we watch the exact same channel, exact same cartoons, and play with the exact same toys. Oh, yeah. You're one of like the two people in the world that I've talked to that knows what backgrounds even are, let alone had them. That's crazy. That's absurd. There is no. I also way. still have a collection of like two thousand of them, so I need to sell them on eBay. Somebody, please contact me. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? Maybe, maybe we'll hook something up. Drop a comment if you're interested in buying two thousand back guns. <laughs> that is, if I don't steal it from him first. Yeah. But um, yeah, I still think it's crazy that I'm the only person you've met, or one of the only people that you've met that knew that. I felt like everybody grew up with it. We were in like a transitional period because we are close to gen alpha and close to is it millennials yeah i don't know what are we gen z we're we are gen z yeah yeah so then before us it's millennials and after us it's we're like right in the cusp of millennial and gen z also because um i have young parents and so do you so we had a lot of well kind of young yeah my, my mom was pretty young, so I grew up with a lot of 2000s and, like, 90s culture. Mm-hmm. And, like, I still had VHS. Almost all my stuff was VHS. I did not. I had all six Crocodile Dundee movies on VHS. All Disney movies on VHS. That's insane. Yeah. That is insane. Yeah. No, I, I didn't grow up with that, but I did have... My first recollection of any video game ever was the first Nintendo DS, like, light or something. I had one of those. I had a Wii. And I remember the funniest story about the Wii is me and my brother got so hooked on it. Like after oh, a week or, a, or the first month of having it, and we got a few good games to start with it too. I remember my parents strictly said, no playing video games before you go to school or when you come home. Only when you're done your homework after you ate and all that, then you can play. But me and my brother were sneaky little brats. And my parents <laughs> go to work at like five in the morning. They worked really hard. And obviously school starts at eight o'clock, right? So yeah. we'd go downstairs we would go to the room and then we would play the thing is my grandmother always would say you know your parents tell you not to do that but then when my parents come home and ask my grandmother did they play video games she'd always say no hell yeah right the thing is that that's something that you really got to cherish your grandparents right your parents love you and they care for you more than anyone but your grandparents they will never sell you out ever like even to their own children who are raising you yeah they wouldn't say anything 
I'm not sure you, if you might know, but some of the older fellas listening might. Uh, have you heard of the show Two and a Half Men? I've heard of it, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, because I started watching that when I was like, like eight, nine. But that's like that's a pretty raunchy show. Like you're supposed to start watching that when you're like sixteen. But my grandpa always had it on, and they're like, whatever. And it got to the point where my my mom was like, it, are they still watching Two and a Half Men? They're like, no, we we just turn on cartoons. But I have watched almost every single episode of that show. <laughs> And there you go. That's why you got to yeah. cherish the people around you, man. It's so important. Also, my grandma did get a Wii, and I got banned from it in like an hour. <laughs> I got very violent with it. What? Yeah. But I was, yeah, and again, I was like like 10 years off from you, I think partly because of having younger parents, and mm. also just the small town with having just less technology. Yeah. Because I grew up on a Game Boy, and I only had Tetris on it because we got it secondhand. And I also got banned from that because I almost gave my sister a concussion because we I didn't remember. share. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> you told me the story of how you yeah. beat her up for the freaking yeah. Game Boy. And then also I grew up with like the first Xbox, um, PS2. But I my um, brain thought I had Crash Bandicoot on the PS2. But the only reason why I remember Crash Bandicoot is because I used to play it on the um, stationary game consoles at McDonald's when they had the like stuck controller at the station when everyone was like ordering their food and the kids could play. That's when they had the first PlayStation on there. You are old. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even like, I don't even remember had those that. at a Walmart too. I don't remember. I've never had that before. That like just cut off in the two thousands. I was still very young when that like stopped. And again, I was, that was probably like 2006, 2007. Dude, the only place I've seen like a game console like in the shopping area is Aritzia, which is nice because I can use that to combat my depression from how expensive everything is. But it's it's a very basic game. But is there I, even a dude section there? They sell stuff for dudes, but that's not why I go there. Oh, yeah. yeah, but I don't know. I, I never knew that McDonald's had game consoles inside. That's kind of crazy. They used to. It was a big thing in the 90s and the 2000s when they were first pushing the consoles. Mm -hmm. It had this stuck controller on this massive, like, pipe and this, like, massive box TV that was in, like, this metal case. Mm. And you could play the games. And I played Crash Bandicoot, the first one on there. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I remember, though, I never had, like, an Xbox or PS3, but my closest friend did. And every time I went to his house, we'd play on that. He also had a Wii, and I remember... This guy got so mad one time after he lost, I don't know if it was Wii Bowling or something, but I remember that he threw the Wii remote at the TV, broke the TV. We got in so much trouble. I'll never forget that. But those kinds of memories are what make you very grateful for having friends. Oh, 100%. You know? Like, I still think about that to this day, and that happened over a decade ago. I've also grown up in cul-de-sacs and complexes, and everyone had their bikes in their yard and were hanging out. You're about to say something, what? Do you realize that we're two decades old? Yes, I know. It hurts me every day. That is a My lot. My back's already starting to hurt, and I'm 21. <laughs> oh, getting old is going to be so much, I don't know, fun and painful. But that's why, as a man, you got you to gotta work really hard now and make your life good while you're still in your prime. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you're like Muhammad Ali or Mike Tyson, and you're entering your prime age, but you don't dedicate all your time to what you want to do, what you want to be passionate about. What, like, let's say you want to be the best at boxing, like they were. Mm -hmm. Imagine if during your prime years, you do nothing. Then you become 30, and you try to try to make it work, mm -hmm. but you can't compete with the people who have been working on it the whole time. So you definitely got to lock in when, you, when you're in your prime, and that's what we're trying to do now, right? As men reaching that age, your goal is to work really hard. Well, I guess people in general, don't let your prime pass you by. That's a good quote. I should write that down. Dude, I'm, I'm keep, keeping that one in the noggin. But I'm going to tell you a story. Now, I'm not going to get into too many specifics of the story because it is a very personal story. But I will tell you one thing that happened to me earlier this week. So for the past like week and a half, I'll say, mm -hmm. I have been just enveloped in darkness, bro. I'm not even joking. Sometimes what? the brighter horizons get a little bit dark, okay? <laughs> Sometimes. But the truth is, the sun is still going to rise eventually. But we all go through our periods of darkness, okay? Even though we try to be positive here, yep. that's just the nature of life. Things happen. So I went through this whole week and a half of just being very, very down, and I did not know why. But then I figured it out, and it was because some of the people very, very close to me were doing a lot of things this week, and I was doing nothing. 
Like they went out, did a bunch of stuff without me. Like yeah. not that I particularly wanted to go or that like the fact they didn't ask me to go was like a big deal or anything. It wasn't. But like they were out doing a bunch of things and I was just kind of at home because I'm in my two weeks off from school period. And as I sat here and I just felt worse and worse as the days went by, I started to get very angry, frustrated, and I couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. And then yesterday I realized that at first I thought I was suffering from FOMO, mm. which for those of you that don't know is the fear of missing out. I thought I was just afraid that I'm missing out on all these experiences that these people are having. But I knew that based on how I've grown throughout my life, I'm done having FOMO because I had that when I was in high school and it led me on a, like it led me astray. It led me off the path where I was supposed to be. So I don't get FOMO anymore. So I felt very confused feeling these negative emotions for no reason. And then I realized the reason why I was having it is because for the past two weeks, I haven't done anything insanely productive or I haven't felt fulfilled with my life. And you guys should know this because I haven't been uploading super consistently with the videos either. Like it's been two weeks. Normally I'd like to post a short every single day. I have been putting a little bit more effort into editing them, adding, like adding more images and stuff, but definitely not any justification for me to not post one every single day when I have two weeks off from school. Oh, 100%. And the thing is that school, work, and the gym are what ground me in my day-to-day -day life. If I'm not doing any of those three things, I feel almost empty. Like it feels like nothing's there, nothing worthwhile in my life. And that's when I realized that I started to give the responsibility of my happiness to other people. So those friends that I felt almost envious of, it was simply because I wasn't doing anything worthwhile with my time. And that was a bit of a revelation for me because of course everybody knows a lot of these things. But it's only when you're in the moment where everything sucks and you realize, damn, it's not anybody else's fault, it's on me. I haven't been doing anything, that's why I feel like garbage. When you're in that moment, that's when you really make a change. So once I realized that, I was like, okay, so clearly I'm unhappy with my situation. Let me do something about it. And now here we are recording the podcast. I worked out the other day. We're doing pretty good. But I realized that there was a very good metaphor that I saw in a YouTube video. And it said that if you are suffering or you think you're suffering from FOMO, think about it this way. It doesn't matter how good the food on somebody else's plate is. If you're full, you won't feel hungry. So to those of you that suffer from FOMO, you're thinking, damn, those guys are out partying. Those guys are out drinking. They're having the time of their lives. And here I am at home doing nothing. Maybe it's not that you are envious of what they're doing. It's just that you're not satisfied with what you're doing. You can go out and do something that aligns with your purpose and values and make your life worth living. Once you do that, it gets so much better. I was just about to say that a lot of times you're not actually feeling bad about missing out on their experience or going out to their events is that you're worried that you're not living. L-I-V-I-N, living. I remember that quote. Yes. You know where it's from? Oh, where is it from? Is it from a movie? Yes. Damn it, I don't know. I'm terrible Dazed and Confused, movies. Matthew McConaughey. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, I knew, wait, what's the movie? Uh, Dazed and Confused. Okay, I might have to watch that. What's it about? A lot of high people. <laughs> Okay, well, fantastic. Well, maybe I'll give it a shot. But on that topic, it um, I just saw it the other day, and it was an amazing video. They were talking about the breakdown and the real meaning behind the movie um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Have you seen that by chance? Ferris Bueller's Day Off is about a teenage boy who fakes being sick to skip school and have this amazing day and go out with his girlfriend and his friend. So he fakes being sick and goes out. And this entire movie, he travels the city. He goes to all these great places. They go on drives with him and his friend and his girlfriend. And in that movie, it's so extravagant. This guy does more in one day than most people today do in an entire year. And his drive to push forward and maximize and have the best day of his life just shows how much you are missing out on and how much you can still experience. And it's not that, the movie actually isn't about Ferris Bueller and him going on having this great day. It's actually about his best friend because his best friend, he's always sick, he's depressed, he's suicidal, he's anxious, he's always afraid of getting in trouble by his dad or how other people will think about him. But the entire movie is Ferris trying to tell him, it's okay, things happen, live your life. 
And it was just such a great perspective because the movie's not about Ferris Bueller. The movie's about his friend. And that friend is you. You're that friend who's anxious and scared and in this bubble and having the spotlight syndrome that, oh, what are people going to think about me? But you just got to live. <laughs> Dude, that, that's a crazy it, it, it's parallel. A, it's an amazing movie. And that is honestly something everyone should watch because it shows you what you can actually do with a day. Mm-hmm. That's, and a, that's crazy. The best quote about that movie, and it's the main quote. Mm-hmm. Let me quickly pull it up. Pull it up, Jamie. <laughs> we got to get a Jamie up in here. You know, when we hit like 100K subs or something, I'll get a Jamie. <laughs> if you guys don't know who Jamie is, he's like the guy on Joe Rogan's podcast who like researches stuff for him. I, I want a Jamie, but I want him to be like a good friend of mine for sure. Because he'll say stuff and give his opinions. But this is Ferris Bueller's quote of the movie. Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once, you could miss it. I love that quote so much. It's amazing. It's such a good quote, man. And it's important to know because so many people get wrapped up with, you know, work, business, all these things to try and make money. But it's not always just about that. Like, I think that it's it's kind of a duality. You have to have the drive and work ethic to put in the hours and make money Mm -hmm. but you also have to have the play aspect of it as well because if you have nothing to show for it other than the money what's it worth have you ever thought about why so many rich people once they become successful start doing charity work and teaching other people how to do it because the fulfillment is not just in making the money having the cars having the watches the fulfillment is in helping others it's in teaching them what you know Now, not all rich people do this for sure, but the most successful and most fulfilled ones, why do they all write books? Because they're trying to teach. They're trying to share what they learned through their life with others. So imagine if you just did that throughout your entire life. Now, that doesn't mean sacrifice the work so that you can just relax and make memories, Mm -hmm. but do both at the same time. Because a lot of people also say that it's not just the money that you make, but the journey itself to get to where you want to be is the most important thing. Obviously, the very cliche quote of it's not about, wait, it's the journey, not the destination, mm-hmm. right? And that's, it's very true. You, you, if you think about your most important milestones in life, let's say hitting a PR in the gym, your most defining moment might be getting to that PR. But when you think about how happy you were and the progress you made, it's not just about the PR. It's about every day that you went in and climbed to a new weight. Every single time that you beat your personal record, you get better. And, and that you're never you better. satisfied. It lasts for the day and you're like, mm-hmm. wow, that's great. I got it. But then now, are you just going to stick with that weight or are you going to keep pushing? You got to keep pushing that envelope. Yeah. And all these people who have these amazing, great stories and these prolific lifestyles and have pretty much lived an entire movie, they weren't doing it staying inside and sitting around. Mm. This has marketed itself as a tool, but it's slowly become a weapon. Because we have all this connection and all this sociability with all these people around the world, but we're so closed off and our social skills are dwindling. Yeah. So we've become so desensitized now that we're not actually living life anymore. Oh, yeah. It's actually, it's tragic that something so magnificent could be used for such terrible purposes. Yep. That's the truth about anything. Anything that's strong and powerful and useful is misused and it becomes bad. That's just Mm -hmm. the truth about life. The question is, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to sit back and let it take over your life? Or are you going to get out there and do something great? One of the people that I knew growing up, like very, very close, like probably if I had to narrow it down to people who are like blood related to me, except they're not, like we were that close. Like I spent the same amount of time at my house as their house on a weekly basis. Like I was at their house all the time. I remember one of them that grew up and one thing that changed their life was the introduction of technology. They began to become more closed off, just spend more time with the phone or with whatever technology they had. And then it took a toll on their social skills. Like in my friend circle, that happened. And even my like cul-de-sac neighborhood, I'll never forget this because my house was the first one to have an Xbox. And we, we didn't even have the Xbox 360. We had the Xbox One. And that's still the Xbox. Well, it's kind of sat collecting dust now because we yeah. don't use it. But when I first got it, it was the Xbox One S, I think. And this was when it had first come out. And we bought it and it came with Minecraft. I'll never forget it because no my parents bought it for us on Christmas. 
And I asked for a Switch, but my brother asked for an Xbox. And, you know, the younger sibling gets his way. So my parents ended up buying an Xbox. But I tip my hat off to him because I'm very grateful that it was an Xbox and not a Switch. What the hell am I going to do with a Switch? <laughs> At least with an Xbox, I can play with my friends. And I remember that when we first got the Xbox, our neighbors, like kids, are two of our very, very good friends, they came over. They were like, oh, my God, you guys got an Xbox. That's crazy. And then the tradition became every day before school because we used to catch a ride with them. That We used to carpool, and they'd take us to school. We'd pick them up on the way home. Every day before we went to school, they'd come over to my house, and we'd like all sit around playing Minecraft and stuff. And then slowly we moved into first-person shooters. We just had a really good time playing these games. But then they got an Xbox, and then so did the people down the street. Yep. And, yeah, we all played together still, but – there was a disconnect there. We're still far away from each other in the comfort of our own homes playing on these screens. I'm not saying it wasn't fun. It was a blast. I love playing these games, and it helped me make a lot of other friends as well. Like the friend group I have right now, I wouldn't have if it wasn't for Fortnite. Not even joking. I remember that I met them because we were playing Fortnite, and my brother knew them, so I was like, oh, you know what? I'll just hop on and play a couple games with them because all of my actual friends at the time had a PS4? Yeah, PS4. Yeah. So... I was pretty much alone. So I was like, oh, you know what? I'll hop on and play with these guys. And now we're all best friends. So it helps make connections for sure. But don't forget what you had to sacrifice to get there. Mm -hmm. Right? You could have been outside doing a lot of other things. And me and my brother also talked about this on a previous episode where one thing that I do regret about playing all these video games is realizing that I'm losing time with my parents. Because one day I'm going to move out. One day I'm going to go live my life and do things. And I'm going to be busy. So how frequently am I going to get to spend time with my parents who are consistently getting older? And you never really know when that last moment is. Think about it. If you ever played games with your friends and you stopped, do you distinctly remember the last moment where you played games? Did you say, all right, guys, this is it. Goodbye. No, it just happened. Mm -hmm. You played, you played, you had fun, and you thought, hey, I'm going to do this next week. And then there was no next week. So do you want that to be the same case with your parents or any other loved one? Yeah. You care about them. So why not spend time with them? That's an important quality as a man because you can work as hard as you want. But what's the point of it if you don't spend time with the people you love? Even the richest people, what can't they buy back? Life, um, time. Those two things are so important. Once your parents, your girlfriend, your friends, once they all pass away or they get old, you can't buy back that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So work hard and get rich. Yes, absolutely. Follow your goals and chase your dreams. But don't pass up on the opportunity to enjoy life today. Yep. Like, we wouldn't even be friends if I was stuck in this whole, I got to make a million dollars. I, I can't have any distractions, no friends. I just got to sit in my room <laughs> and just work. If I did that, we wouldn't even be here. So to those of you out there who are thinking about grinding and really working hard, do it. But also cherish the time with those around you. Because I'm sure that a lot of you, I've looked at the analytics, most of you are in two age categories, either 14 to 18 or like 25 to 32. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I, it was interesting. Like 40% so, is 25 to 32. Wow. So to those of you that are younger than me, work hard. That's the most important thing. But to those of you that are older than me and probably have a job and are providing for your family and everything, don't forget to spend time with those around you because you never really know when that last moment's going to be. Mm -hmm. I recently had to deal with the loss of a loved one, and I didn't know when my last moment was going to be with him, mm -hmm. right? But I'm glad that I got to spend time with him before it happened. Imagine regretting that for the rest of your life. 100%. And also for the younger fans out there, I'm going to give you some hard truths because I had suffered from this. I had a serious phone addiction through my entire teen years, and I had lost countless summers and just days at home with my family and my friends and going out. I was just completely glued to my phone, and I'm still working through the phone addiction and separating from that and living life. And the only thing I can really try and give to you is live impetuously. Try and find a purpose and... Give yourself something to look forward to, but also still enjoy your hours throughout the day. Don't 
be in the loop of, oh, like I got to wait for the school day to end and constantly waiting for that next little jump. Because if you keep jumping forward in those leaps, then the day is completely gone. And then your week's gone, your month's gone, your year's gone. One of the most eye-opening things is that, you know, like that calendar where it's just a bunch of boxes and it says, this is your life if you live to 80 years old and each box counts as a week. So you color in the box. I've seen people who are like 40 and they've colored in half of it. And I'm thinking, you've already lost half of your life. It's terrifying. That's scary to know that you're only going to live that much. But maybe understanding the impermanence of life is the secret to cherishing every moment. Like, if you know that it's not going to last forever, that's when you'll appreciate every moment. That's why, like, Stoics kept skulls on their desks to remind them that one day they're going to die. So they got to cherish every moment. So I don't know where I'm going to find a human skull, but uh, (laughs) (laughs) I got to find something that will remind me of the fact that I'm going to die one day and I want to make this time on Earth very worth it. 100%. 100%. I'm not sure who the quote is from, so it's not from me, but it's from someone else. Uh, sir, can you tilt the mic towards you? <laughs> but everyone has two lives. The, f- the first life is just living and living your normal life, and the second life mm-hmm. is realizing that you only have one. Damn! Yeah. Oh, that's you start actually to so really, true. Um, open your eyes. And I think that's another thing um, with kind of the mental health that crisis that's happening with mm-hmm. especially the younger generation. Um, there's another quote from Fight Club, Tyler Durden. There is no great war for these young men to fight in. It's a spiritual war. The war's on themselves. And throughout many people's lives, everyone had like a near-death experience or that um, realization that, wow, like ha- having that f- fear, n- not so much of fear of death, but an awareness of death and realizing that it's there. But kids nowadays, they have a cushioned indoor lifestyle on their phones and not understanding the concept of time and just letting their lives waste away on technology. They're, they don't even realize their time is completely passing. Mm-hmm. And they have no great war and they have no near-death experience. So kids are seeking that and trying to dig deep. And personally, who's str- personally as someone who struggled with mental health, it felt like... A lot of children who are suicidal is because they're trying to have that near-death experience. Damn, to like open their eyes to the truth of life. That's kind of crazy. Because a lot of people who have a near-death experience, they change their lives drastically because they realize this isn't forever. You're not tomorrow isn't even guaranteed. You may not even wake up tomorrow. I may not wake up tomorrow. Even if you're healthy, it doesn't matter. It's true. You You never never know what happens. Yeah, you never know what's gonna happen. And that's why, like, you see these stories of people who go almost to the point of taking their own life and then either they fail or something changes their mind and then either they turn their life to God or find some purpose, they completely turn it around and they become unrecognizable because that experience opened their eyes. So I think that one thing is to go through those experiences and understand that everything is here to teach you something. And the second thing is also to be open to those experiences because if you're not thinking about what this is trying to teach me and you're just thinking, man, my life sucks. Why Why do I have to go through this? Maybe think about what you're supposed to learn. Fear and discomfort shouldn't be as avoided as it is now and I'm trying to push myself towards more discomfort and more scenarios where I'm like nervous or fearful mm-hmm. because those are very, very important lessons in life and where you learn. And if you're constantly comfortable and in this safe space, then you're never going to learn anything because your brain is completely shut off. True. True, 100% true. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have a list, in my opinion, of four, but you can add a fifth one if you see anything that I'm missing. To me, these are the four qualities of a good man. Let's just say good person. Of a good person, okay? Number one, you know how to control your reactions to emotions, okay? Number two, you put others before yourself, Number three, you are strong, but kind. And number four, you don't give up. Do you have anything else you want to add to this list? Do you think I've covered it? That caps off perfectly, honestly. All right, well then A mullet let's, helps too, by the way. A mullet helps. Look <laughs> at this guy. Look at, get, give them a tour of the mullet. Oh yeah, look at him. There we go. There we go. He's, he's rocking the mullet. You know, funny enough, when we were watching the Canucks game, 
By the way, we made it to round two. I know that everybody is getting like really, really turnt these days. Oh, Have you seen good. Scott Road in 70 Second these days? Oh, I, I, I'm st- terrified. It's crazy. <laughs> I don't even know if you can drive over there because of how many people there are. It is insane. But also... Canadian patriotism is at an all-time high because oh yeah. the Canucks are actually pulling through. <laughs> the funniest thing is we have four... Well, we had four teams. We just lost our first Canadian team in the first round. So we had Vancouver Canucks, Toronto Maple Leafs, Winnipeg Jets, and Edmonton Oilers. So we had four people in. In fact, what time is it? It is 4.40. So pretty much right as we cap off this episode... The Toronto Maple Leafs will play their Game 7 against Boston to decide which one goes to the second round. So, that'll be very interesting to watch. And they're going to dominate them. I mean... Leafs for the win. I mean, they're not the best team. Yeah. But... Yeah. You know, the funny thing is, every time that Toronto goes to a Game 7 against Boston, they get smoked. But, let's hope this time is different. But that's the thing. Like we were saying, remember, quality four is never give up. Toronto Maple Leafs better not give up today, and they better win. No, sir. All right, but anyways, let's delve into each one. So to me, I'll start with controls his reactions to emotions. This one is really important because a man who acts solely out of emotion is weak. If you can't control yourself when you're angry or when you're upset, you're weak. You don't know how to take care of your own mental state and understand that these emotions should not dictate how you act. Because think about it. What is really an emotion? It's just a response to an event in your life. It's not something that just appeared for no reason. Something happened and it elicited a response from your mind. That's why you felt angry or sad or happy. But to act irrespective of anger and sadness is a very powerful quality. Like if I went through that week and a half or this week and a half and continued to go the way I was, I would have been a train wreck by today. (laughs) Because let me tell you, my mind was going to dark, like not dark places, the point of like, you know, those kinds of things. No, of course not. But I was just really upset. And I listened to I listened to my whole Juice World playlist for the first time in like two years. It's been two years since I've listened to like good, like music by him. Now that's not because I'm like depressed or anything, but in that moment I was just like, damn, I just feel like listening to Juice World right now because I'm sad. And then after that, I was like, you know what? Life is not so bad. I just got to take it in my own hands and just not react and get in my own head, especially reacting to these negative emotions. Like if I freak out and say oh my God, this week has been terrible. I now have depression. I got to go see a therapist. My life is over. Obviously, it's going to suck. So instead, when a negative emotion arises, just understand that it's going to go away. Find things to do to be happy and you'll be fine. So that's number one. Do you want to elaborate on that? And you're also giving power to people. And Mm. even in your case, they don't even know it. They're not even trying to. They're not trying to put your mood down. They're not trying to bully you or exclude you. Oh, yeah. You're just giving them power. It's like putting a metaphorical collar on yourself. If someone can control your emotions, they can control you. So you got to be able to be independent in your own emotions and your own thought and opinions. That was a very good, very good (laughs) metaphor. Damn. (laughs) All right. Well, number two, puts others before himself. I'll let you take the floor with this one. Why do you think that it's important for, let's start with a man. Why is it important for a man to put others before himself? Because I think that's always been the duty that we were given by God and by our own social dynamics. And I I find a lot of purpose in it personally, um, just with working more, working harder, finding my purpose, and just living with more ferocity in a sense and continuing to work harder and harder because I have a mother, a sister, a niece, and I want to take care of them. So I want to keep working as hard as I can. Mm -hmm. And I could just be lazy and be a liberty to my family and just kind of live an okay life, but I wouldn't feel good at all. I wouldn't Mm -hmm. be able to support anyone. Well, yeah, I could have been doing mediocre financially, but I've almost doubled it now because I've been able to work harder And even though I have longer days and sometimes my feet feel sore and I feel tired and I don't have sleep, some days I'll have like two or three hours of sleep. But it makes me feel better because I know my mom doesn't have to stress as much. Mm -hmm. If I can stress, people have to stress less. And that automatically makes me feel better. Stress is not a bad thing, people. Putting yourself in stressful situations makes you grow. Mm -hmm. And you grow stronger. And it feels good to feel strong. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And. You know what they say, pressure makes diamonds. So if you're not stressed out and dealing with things, then maybe you're just not dreaming big enough. 100%. You got to provide for those around you. And I think that p- putting others before yourself is not always just about financial too. Like you could look at it as the 
chivalry aspect. Look at like when you think of heroes in today's society, what comes to mind? <laughs> I was gonna say Rambo. Who? Rambo. I don't know what that is. <laughs> what is that? I, Rambo. Okay, I know it's a movie, but I don't Sylvester know. Sylvester Stallone, the best goddamn action hero ever. <sighs> okay, there's one thing you guys gotta know about me. <laughs> I am not good with like older movies. I have not watched them. I do not know the classics. I'm a little more decorated in movie culture. He's getting there. I am still bullying him. He does thankfully know Kevin Bacon, which is good. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you remember that yes. joke, but Yes. You know the thing is, I haven't like I really want to, but I haven't even watched The Godfather yet. I know that that's a really to good movie fair, too. To be fair, I haven't either. So Really? That is one of the big ones I have not watched, but I know it is good. Okay, anyways, going back to the topic at hand, modern day heroes. What is one example of that? Who do you think of? I mean, the biggest one today is Tate. Okay, interesting. At least a hero for man. Okay, fair, the fair, young man. fair, fair. I was going to say firefighters. That's uh-huh. what I think of when I see, when I hear the word hero. Like firefighter or like, Search and rescue, or I've people. I've been too who, influenced by social media. I'm sorry. Yeah, he, he's a bit of a. I can't say that word. Hold on. Uh, he is a chained prisoner to his phone. Yeah, he's he's a little hooked. But well, actually, We're working no, on it. Let's be honest. You're not that bad. Like if you compare us to the average person, we how are how I used good. to be. It was a lot worse. Yeah, it was severe and. Also, now with being able to moderate my phone time and mm-hmm. seeing other people who are struggling with it, it's like, wow, it's like looking at a zombies and it's yeah. terrifying because that's how I spent my entire teen years. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll never forget this because I was at a concert one time. Like it was just some like school thing. I was at a concert and I remember looking at people who weren't playing at the time, like people with instruments. They were sitting there. They had their phones and they were just like hooked. They looked like emotionless mannequins. They look like this. You are completely locked in when you're using this thing. You see in concerts, in the buses, just anywhere public, no one can just be sitting by themselves. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that even just like taking the train or just like being around downtown, just even even when people are walking, they can't even walk and be without their phones. That's true. Terrifying. Dude, it's so like what really makes me mad is when people cross the street while looking at their phone. Makes me so mad because the thing is, is it people's job? Is it the other driver's job to make sure that you cross the street safely? Yes, I hope that they stop and follow the traffic laws. But let's say somebody runs a red or doesn't see you if it's dark outside or something. Do you want to die because you are looking at your phone? No, be aware of your surroundings and be responsible for your own safety. The city's chaotic and we have some horrendous drivers. And I, I'm never on my phone when I'm walking, especially crossing the street. Mm-hmm. I have almost been hit multiple times. Yeah, and... Rule number one, look both ways. People don't even look at the road when they're crossing the street. Yeah, literally. That is crazy to me. It's crazy. But anyways, going back to it, to me, what I think of when I hear the word hero is those stories of firefighters or people who like jump into flooded cities to go and save people. That gives me a sense of heroism because you are putting yourself in harm's way to save somebody else that you don't even know. Right, as a firefighter, imagine that you are jumping into burning buildings to save people you don't know. Mm-hmm. Most people wouldn't jump into a burning building to save their own family. Yeah. Why? Because that's not something that they see as worthwhile. They're too self-centered to give something up for the people around them. But I think that what makes a good man is somebody who's willing to give his own happiness up sometimes for the benefit of others. And like you said, If you can take on more stress, but your mom doesn't have to stress as much, I think that's a job well done. Like some days can be very, very long and very, very stressful. And I'm just Mm -hmm. so sleep deprived and I'm stressed out and I'm trying to time manage everything, trying to get into the gym, hang out with my friends and hang out with family and work and trying to manage all these other things that I'm working on. And at the end of the day, like I'm so defeated, but at the same time, it's, it's freeing having that stress and realizing that other people are okay. It's feels so much better. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. hundred percent. So we've got through the first two. Third one is strong but kind. Now the reason I put this on here is it's one thing to be a menace to society, to be strong, to have huge muscles. That is very, very good. But we all know that the strongest people are usually the nicest ones. That's just the truth. There's literally a quote from, I think it's Vagabond, 
And it says that all truly strong people are kind. And I'll never forget that quote because I commented that on another TikTok where it was of an NHL player giving his stick to a little kid. And mm. after a game, he's like, here you go, buddy. This is all yours. And then the kid starts screaming. He's so happy as he walks away. And it's just a bunch of clips of people being selfless. And I commented that. And that comment, I think, in my entire TikTok career has the most likes of any comment. That one had like 2,000 <laughs> likes, bro. Wow. Not even joking. I was top comment on that post. And it resonated with a lot of people because it's true, right? The strongest people are the ones who can still be kind to others. It doesn't mean anything if you're now at the top of the food chain, if you, you know, bully everybody else below you. Also, because the strongest people know it does not take very much to be kind. Mm -hmm. It does it's not. It's not like it's taking a large chunk out of your day yeah. or it's not like you have to give away all your money, but you can still be very, very kind and very, very helpful to people. Yeah. Like, you know, that watch guy I showed you on YouTube, his name is Nico Leonard. He's kind of fat Irish guy. So funny, but yes, yes, yeah, I yeah. Okay, that. there you go. So he he was talking to a YouTuber. Do you know who Supercar Blondie is? Yes. Yeah, so I don't know if it was her husband or somebody she knows, but either way, Nico went out for like dinner with them or something like that, and somebody that Supercar Blondie knows was like extremely rude to like wait staff and stuff like that. After that, Nico Leonard never talked to them ever again. Damn. Just because of that experience. And it's true because that shows your character. If you're not kind to the people around you, especially people who are working a job, right? I will never get mad at somebody for making a mistake on the job. If you're extremely disrespectful to me, I'll still control my emotions. And just the basics of manners. It does not exactly. take much at all. Exactly. It do does it really take that much out of you to say, please, thank you, and just be understanding when somebody makes a mistake? No. And the more emotional this society becomes, the more angry people get over stupid things. Like, for example, you go on Instagram, you look at, like, a stupid turn that a car makes. And then they go into road rage. They start screaming at each other. They get out of the car. Sometimes they fight. Sometimes it ends in somebody killing somebody else. Yeah. What is the point of all that? You got that mad over a road incident that you could have just ignored and went on your way. And now you're still late. <laughs> exactly. Or worse, you're not even going to make it you're at all. Dead, yeah. Exactly. So what is the point of it all, man? Don't get so caught up in these things. Like, just be kind. Just be kind to those around you. And the best part about this is, when you start being nice to other people, you also find it much easier to be nice to yourself and to be happy. Like when you start spreading positivity, you realize that your life just becomes a lot better because that's what you're focusing on, right? So that's that's what I got to say for number three. And number four, oh, you got something to say? Go ahead. Well, also, um, and it's not like you have to be a pushover, but just being forgiving. Mm -hmm. And this goes for anyone else around you. Um, everyone's had it if there's like maybe a slow driver because it's like an old person or someone like working drive through and they're taking forever or even your parents they do something or they punish you for something and it's mm -hmm. like oh it's just it's it just burns away at your heart and your mind and you're just thinking about it all day and you're festering all this anger but something that really opened my eyes and you can even have it for your parents too a lot of people are very hard on their parents mm -hmm. because they have this perspective oh why are they being so mean to me they're punishing me so much oh i'm so angry at them but we have this perspective on our parents that they're they're like these completely different people but this is their first time being alive too damn yeah that is so true damn i didn't even think this about is that. all our first time we're not going to be good at it Wow, we put so much pressure on those people who are older than us who have done mm -hmm. things because they have a little bit more experience, but it's still their first, first time. First time being alive. First time being here. <laughs> that's true. But that the other thing that's important about that is it's your only time. Yeah. Right? You got to make it count. It's a lot of stress. Don't make it harder on everyone else or oh, yourself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. So spread positivity and be a kind soul. And the last one we got to talk about is not giving up. A strong man is someone who does not give up. The indomitable human spirit. Exactly. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Because without that, what are you? Let's be honest, everybody faces challenges. Everybody faces moments where they wonder, will I make it through? And the answer is, do you believe you can make it through? Because if you do, you will. And that's the, like, it's kind of a corny line to say that if you believe you can, you will. Mm -hmm. But it's the truth. You've never seen somebody who succeeded without genuinely believing with every fiber of their being that they were going to make it. Like right now, as I record this episode, I'm not recording it like dilly-dallying, saying, oh, you know, I'll just see where it takes me. No, I have intention. I have purpose. I say that no matter how many times somebody drops a hate comment saying, not everybody should have a podcast, or this guy's just living in his mom's basement as he records this episode. Those people don't know anything about me, so why I, I'm not going to let it get to me. And no matter how many times I get a hate comment or how many people tell me I can't do it, 
not just here in life, whether it's a job or any sort of investment I decide to make. If somebody tells me I can't do it, I don't let it get to me because I know that I can and I will. And that's what allows me to be successful. That's what allows every man, woman, and any entrepreneur to be successful. What you set your sights on, if you don't give up, you'll get there eventually. It's just the truth. Because the only difference between a winner and a loser is that the winner tried at least one more time, just kept pushing that extra 1% effort that mm-hmm. just kept going. Mm-hmm. We actually talked about that on the last episode. We said that Thomas Edison tried to make the light bulb. I In the episode, I said a 1,000 times, but I'm pretty sure it was like, no, there's no way it was 10,000. 10,000 is a very large number. But when I Googled it, it said 10,000. But at either way. At least 12. At least 12. <laughs> okay. He, he tried a lot. Let's just say that. He tried a lot. And, you know, Henry Ford tried a lot. All these people that really changed the game and changed the world, it's because they don't give up. All these people with great stories didn't have some base to go off of. Mm-hmm. Henry Ford making the car. There was no other style of car like that before. He was starting completely from scratch. There was no pre-existing light bulb that Edison could have tried to base it off of mm-hmm. and kind of alter and make his own. Yeah. He was starting completely from scratch. So all these people who were worried about either trying to post content or go for a dream job or just anything you want to do, there we have so much basis to go off of that why wouldn't you try? Yeah. Why not? Even if it's something so sporadic and you think no one will appreciate it or no one will want it or that it's not important, it all that matters is that it's important to you. Mm-hmm. And you can make something great, and it's you that made it. Yeah. Everything that's impossible just hasn't been made yet. That's actually a very good point. So Nobody thought th- it was they possible They thought no man could fly. I yeah. was just oh about to say that. God. Then they're right, brothers. Oh, my they God. They made it happen. We are cooking, bro. We are cooking. We're on the same wavelength. Well, yeah. I know that Eric is going to appear on a lot of future episodes. Yeah, so 100%. We're, I hope you guys like this episode so far. I mean, we're coming to the conclusion of it now. But Eric, any closing thoughts before we get to our famous outro? The only advice I can give to anyone that's helped me is live impetuously. Live with purpose and live with ferocity. Keep pushing and keep pushing the envelope. Keep working harder. When you think you're working the hardest, you're nowhere near even half of that. You can push even more. Even though I've run myself ragged to the bone trying to work hard for my own personal goals and... Um, in the gym and with my job, I know I can still push way more and there's more that I can do. So what you think you can do now, it's so much more. So keep pushing even farther. And it doesn't matter what anyone thinks. We're at 8 billion people. How many people do you think you've seen in your lifetime? 100,000, a million, even 10 million. That does not even scrape the surface of the population. There's all these people in these countries. If you died tomorrow, there'd be at least 7 billion people that wouldn't even know you existed. So why not? Just go for it. That's very true. It's very true. Wise there's all these people, by. but there's only one of you. Oh, yeah. So make that one of you. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, you know what time it is. It's time for quote of the week. We had to replace uh, my brother because this guy is away, but he'll tell those stories next week on the next episode. But we are here with the quote of the week. And this week's quote is, Climb the mountain, not so that the world can see you, but so that you can see the world. And I got this quote from a random Instagram reel, but uh, it's very profound because if you do it for yourself, you'll, you'll appreciate it when you reach that summit. Don't do it so that everybody else can look at you and say, damn, look at what he did. That's cool. Getting appreciation from other people is very nice, but it's the self-fulfillment of doing it on your own and making it that makes life worth living. So my last, my last statement here for you will be, go out there, be a strong man or woman, be very kind to others, and follow the things that we said today. So I hope that your life gets better. And as always, remember, live a positive life, y'all. Peace out. Peace out.